watching with us here on Court TV Live. I'm Julie Grant. Hope your Monday is off to a good start. Uh, we've got a lot cooking in the legal world for you. And we go now to Colorado, where the jury in the stepmother murder trial could soon be hearing some details surrounding Letitia Stout's defense case. That's right, because the state's expected to rest their case in chief a little later today. So then it's time for the defense. Now, to be clear, they don't carry a burden. Uh, but what they're going to do is they're going to present this, this affirmative defense that uh, Letitia Stauk is not guilty by reason of insanity. And so that means it's going to be up to the state to prove that she is sane. So, so the burden always stays with the state. And um, then, of course, uh, we're going to see closing arguments uh, after all of, of the the uh, cases and rebuttal is all put in, uh, then it'll be time uh, for this jury to make a decision. Uh, now, let's go back a little bit. On Friday, the jury heard a little more on the 39-year-old's alter ego. This is really something. She blames her alter ego for Gannon's death. Now, in one of her two competency evaluations, Letitia Stout clarifies the world of Maria. Take a listen. What you say is like daydreaming in terms of yeah. you know, other lives, other personalities. Yeah. Other it is actually a whole world. But daydreaming to me would be just somebody having like a good imagination. You know what I mean? No. It's like a whole entirely different world. Like, for example, if you were to talk to Harmony, Harmony can tell you exactly what it's like to be abused in depth, like detail by detail, every sexual part that question she'd want to answer. She could do it for you. You see what I'm So I try not to say that's like daydreaming because that's like real. You know what I mean? Where if, you know, I think the other ways to like explain it. Maria, like I said, she don't, she doesn't have awareness that everybody else is just her world and she's protecting me. And there's not people consistent in her world. Like, for example, you, Maria wouldn't know you. The only people who that Maria's moral chance are early and like people that she's been sought out to protect. So without any daydreaming, it's an actual job that she has to do. The kids were part of that world. Like anybody want to do something to gain and blame them high hardly, Maria goes like she can get them too because I've been my whole life not having adult protection. I know it sounds many. I've created so many different personas in my life and so many different ways to cope with everything I've been through. The sunlight is one of them. Like being in somewhere warm, being somewhere where I can use those coping skills to help me when I have a flashback. You know, when I wake up from a nightmare, when I, so I tried to talk to him about it. And I said, hey, Colorado and me just don't, you know, like it's causing me to get worse mentally. I was having more of my manic episodes. I was just like having more episodes where I forget and loss of time. And a lot of it was because I didn't have those coping skills. Like you can't play softball here in Colorado. You know what I mean? Not during the months that I'm used to playing back home. And so, you know, all these skills I do over time were taken from me in Colorado. Oh, what a world Maria lives in. And there was a third evaluation for sanity. That happened back in March of 2020. Take a listen to what uh, the doctor who evaluated her, Dr. Torres, recalled from her time with Letitia Stouk. In your expert opinion, is that when if it happens, a triggering event occurs and she changes into Maria Sanchez? It's a little hard to tell from her self-report. It seems as though that's what she's trying to imply to some degree because she talks about going into protection mode and she often references Maria as the protector. Um, and at the same time, in her self-report, it seems as though she's explaining what she is seeing, presumably, as Letitia Stouk. Moment. Would it be common for them to say, I blacked out, I don't know what happened after that moment? That happens a lot. Does it happen a lot in criminal cases? Where I suspect it happens often enough in criminal cases. Where insanity is an issue. 
Where insanity is an issue, it's common, I would say, for people to have periods of not remembering. Mm, okay, so bottom line, uh, after that, that third evaluation, which was focused on whether or not uh, she was, was sane at the time of, of the incident, um, the two doctors who evaluated her both said, yes, yes, she is sane. Then the Stout defense team got the opinion of another doctor who said, nope, insane, and now they're going with the not guilty by reason of insanity defense. Will it work? Maybe. Let me see what my guests think. Let me bring back in attorneys Rob Corbett and Cannon Kearney, get their thoughts on this. Cannon is shaking his head, saying, no way, Jose. Cannon, go ahead. Tell us why, please. Well, first off, I'm thinking uh, coming from uptown New York, Maria, Maria. <laughs> she definitely is going down for telling fibs and telling stories. So I believe that she has shown enough that she is very sane. First and foremost, she got a different car um, after the death. Uh, second off, she tried to escape from the police station, or she actually did leave the police station. She escaped from the hospital. I guess Maria was the person who was her alter ego who was doing all of these different things as well. So based off of this, she has shown enough sanity to have remorse, to have a um, uh, pity for her, a doubt for, for what she's going through. So I would say wholeheartedly she's saying she should, justice for Gannon, justice for Gannon. Justice for Gannon, and uh, you're saying essentially Santana, the great Santana would be offended at the Maria Maria stuff. Don't bring Maria into this. Uh, Rob Corbett, uh, what do you think, please? Do you think she's got any chance with this defense? Well, you, you always have a chance, and as a defense attorney, you always say that you're in the case until the jury tells you that you're not by coming back with a guilty verdict. But nationally, the percentage of insanity defenses that are successful is incredibly low. I believe the percentage is in single digits. But the defense has the burden of production, meaning they have to present some evidence. The state has the burden of persuasion. They are the ones that have to convince the jury beyond a reasonable doubt. These types of cases come down to battle of experts, whether you believe the state's experts or whether you believe the defense expert. But there are enough things that would cause me just looking on the outside to doubt her defense at this point.